But what is local contrast? I guess you all know about contrast. A loose definition is that contrast is connected to the ratio of the luminance of the brightest point to that of the darkest point in an image. For instance, if I show you a picture like this one, you'd have a hard time stating that it has good contrast. The real question is, can this be salvaged? Well, of course it can, and there are several ways to do it. I've placed two samplers in the lightest and darkest significant points of the picture. We are in grayscale here, for the sake of simplicity, but the same holds when we deal with color pictures as well. One of the most important sources of information for us is the info palette. If you read the values under the samplers, you will discover that the darkest one has a gray density of 84% and the lightest chimes in at 24%. The extreme values are, of course, 100%, that is, full black, and 0% full white, respectively. This means that in this case we are missing about a third of the contrast available. As I said, you can fix that in several ways, but my favorite method has a name, and the name is curves. So, let's open the curves dialog box and move the endpoints of the curve, a straight line actually, so that the shadow falls in a range of 95% and the highlight around 5%. I won't go all the way because I do want to spare some margin for further maneuvers that may be needed, but this is not so important right now. Ok, done. Do you see how much the image has improved? It definitely has more snap and more appeal. And we may go further. If we decide that the light parts of the picture are the most important, we may grab the curve, say here, and steepen the area of the highlights a bit. The principle, as stated by the great Dan Margulis, is simple. The steeper the curve, the more the contrast. So, more improvement. But there is a trade-off. When we steepen the curve in the quarter tones, we also flatten it near the shadows, so we gain contrast in the quarter tones at the expense of a contrast loss in other parts of the picture. Well, the best things in life don't come free after all. But what I need to say right now is that this is a global intervention. You haven't seen me selecting anything, I am not using masks and so on. This means that I am working on the image as a whole, rather than a section of it. For instance, look at this area here, and let me select it with the rectangular marquee tool. Curves again, and let's boost the contrast. Well, nothing fancy, I just need a steeper curve of some kind to prove the point. Ok, look, I now deselect the area, so you can see the obvious contrast boost where I operated locally. It looks fantastic, but there is a problem. Well, two problems. First, the curve you've just seen would have ruined the image completely if I had it applied globally, because it would plug the shadows and wash out the highlights. Trade-off, remember. Second, even if I were insane enough to painstakingly select area after area and operate locally, the result would be appalling, because there is no serious way to deal with the borders of the selected area. Result? A series of fantastically contrasted tiles looking like checkerboard. Oh my! So, end of the story. No way, basta, fine. I am not going to show you how Alcha works right now, but I'll show you what it can do. This file has two layers. The one at the bottom is identical to the one you've just seen, the original picture, with a curve applied. On top, you have the result of such layer processed with Alce. The question is, could you get to a similar result by using traditional methods like overlays, high or low man shop masking and similar techniques? If you can, give me a ring, because I know a few tricks, but I would find it extremely hard to get there and I definitely couldn't do it in a few seconds. Alce can. The purpose of this and the next video is to show you how, but before we get into that we need to learn about the nuts and bolts of Alce. So let's start from the beginning. <laughs> 